Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. You are Rajshri? Yes, sir. Uh, please take a seat. Thank you, sir. See, now live-in relationship is another new thing which we are hearing and the Supreme Court also gave some ruling on that. What do you think of a live-in relationship? Um, sir, although there are apprehensions that living relationship can be a threat to the uh, institution of marriage in India, since marriage is uh, seen such a sacred institute, but we cannot uh, ignore the fact that uh, living relationships are a social reality right now, and such things are very difficult to regulate. And so recently the um, legal system, uh, the judiciary too has supported the living relationship as a personal matter. So I think we should uh, take into consideration the both sides and uh, look into the uh, future uh, aspects of it. For example, what happens to the child if, in case of separation of a living couple. So I think these things should be considered instead of supporting or re uh, rejecting. Given a chance, given a chance of staying in living relationship, what will be your take? Sir, I cannot think of anything right now, but I uh, I personally won't be uh, supporting for it, it for myself. So my last question. See, there, there are conflicts everywhere in international Russia Ukraine war is going. My take is my the, that Security Council has failed in its objective. Should Security Council be banned? Security Council be disbanded? So this disbanding can't be the solution. Uh, because that the Security Council has been a body which uh, uh, which has played very important role in many conflicts or issues uh, in the world. Uh, if it is failing to a certain extent, then certainly it should be reformed. It can be made more inclusive and certain measures should be taken so that uh, the re uh, entire world as a whole is represented in, uh, um, in, instead of just the powerful nations. If you represent the entire world, then no decision can be made. To the crowd, you cannot convince a crowd. So we have example of countries like India where decisions are made inclusively. That is a different thing. Okay, anyhow, that's your take. Fine, thank you. And uh, you know, your uh, father's in agriculture. What what do you what do you all uh, what does he grow? Uh, Ma'am, currently uh, he grows ginger, uh, bananas, uh, and papaya. So, uh, uh, in what way can mechanization, can, can these things be mechanized, the, the products that are grown on your farm and would mechanization be the way forward for increasing farm incomes? Uh, surely ma'am, uh, because uh, the major uh, issue uh, specifically in our area is of the labor, uh, labor scarcity is a major issue and uh, mechanization can um, certainly help increase the productivity. For example, we have drips, drips and sprinkler irrigation so th this had solved the problem of water scarcity to a large extent uh, also ma'am the harvesters which are used in um, uh, harvesting uh, crops like wheat uh, they have reduced uh, the expenses also and also the uh, scarcity of labor so uh, uh, certainly they so is it go is it happening um, no. it's so expensive so uh, you know mechanization is an expensive process so what needs to be done what would be the best way out so that everybody can get access uh, Ma'am, I can remember of, a, uh, of an example of the village called Hivre Bazar in our district. Uh, they have created a model where such, um, such uh, instruments are um, bought or rented at a community level. And uh, the village uh, Gram Panchayat rents such instruments and then it is used at a very minimum cost by the farmers at a community level. So it needs to be replicated yes. so that everywhere uh, it helps increase yeah, productivity yes. and so it contributes to food security yes. which is a, which, you know we have a crisis at the moment and I think that's going to happen in the future as well. Uh, last question, um, you are you cook, you are saying you know, you're interested in Maharashtra cuisine. Uh, cuisine is an important element of soft power, of a country's soft power. Uh, do you think uh, all cuisines are able to contribute only specific uh, you know, cuisines are able to contribute and what are the other elements of soft power? Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, the cuisine of any region uh, is also part of the identity of that region. Uh, recently we have seen that many traditional cuisines are seen uh, vanishing or being lost from the books as well as in practice. For example, the South Indian cuisines. Also, uh, we talk about millets. Uh, which were a part, very basic part of Indian diet, but they uh, were uh, significantly ignored. So I think that it can it can be used as a tool of soft, soft power, uh, since food basically 
uh, is a, a tool which can be used uh, in the area of food security when we provide food security to other food aids to other nations it definitely is a tool of soft power so what have we done recently and as far as minutes goes uh, Ma'am, uh, this year 2023 is uh, recognized as the International uh, Year on Millets and uh, various initiatives are taken. Uh, in the budget also separate provisions have, made, have been made. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am.